Welcome back everyone, Comic Spectre here. I wanted to start out by thanking all of my subscribers and to any new people that are watching my uh, video, thank you to you, to you as well. Um, this week, uh, this haul that I'm going to be showcasing is a combination of late Silver Age and early Bronze Age with a huge grail at the uh, end of the video for me so uh, we'll just go ahead and get started all right right in front of me you guys see uh, forever people um, this is uh, issue number 11 and uh, it's uh, reminiscent of I believe what is it like uh, the new gods like uh, Kirby-esque Kirby style uh, art storylines whatnot it has that nice uh, 20 cent cover it's a uh, little bit larger than uh, normal, our, our newer books, I would say. Uh, it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, it does have some discoloration on the pages, and obviously has quite a bit of wear and tear just from the age of the book. Next, we have Forever People. Uh, this is issue number 10. And uh, again, this is a uh, another early uh, 20 cent cover I really liked the artwork back then and uh, you know I, I do collect a lot of new books but uh, there's just so much to be said for the, the old the old art the old stories I feel that I can read an old comic book and I get more out of it than I read than reading a new comic book um, and it's not because you know the stories are rehashed it's just I honestly feel that the storytelling was much better back then. Next up, I have issue number 204 of The Mighty Thor. Nice 20 cent cover there. Next, I have issue number 213 of The Mighty Thor. Next, I have looks like a issue of Superman, issue number two hundred fifty-seven. It's a pretty nice cover. There's some obvious wear here, like right up here, like where the B is. Um, there's some obvious wear on the cover. Coloration's really nice on the book, though, and it shows very well. Um, the spine's completely intact. The book, the book, for what it's worth, is completely intact, and it does look good. But there is some definite uh, blemishes uh, on the cover, but uh, still a very nice, very nice copy. Next, I have Mighty Thor issue number two hundred and twelve. Mighty Thor issue number two hundred and twenty-two. That's a nice cover uh, with. Thor and uh, Hercules there. Mighty Thor issue number 227. Mighty Thor issue number 224. Oh, and yeah, that showcases uh, Hercules and the Destroyer. I believe the Destroyer was um, in the first Thor movie. He was like the uh, the guardian that uh, uh, was it Loki that Loki sends it to, uh, to uh, kill Thor on Earth. Next, I have New Gods issue number eight, and this this uh, comic's really beat up, but uh, it's still in pretty good shape though overall. Like the, the cover is completely intact. It does have, uh, it has a, a sizable amount of spine wear, but it's still intact and readable. Next I have issue number 221 of the Mighty Thor. That's, that is actually a pretty nice copy. Mighty Thor issue number 229. That's 
a nice cover there. I like how he's wielding the hammer. Next up, we have New Gods, issue number six. It's a nice cover. And this next issue is actually free. Um, the guys that, uh, this was from an, an auction, and these guys just threw this uh, issue in for free. And it's the Atom, issue number 36. Nice 12 cent cover. That's pretty beat up though. Like you can sell the uh, spine there is like very soiled, but hey, for free, you can't beat that. Next, I have Challengers of the Unknown, issue number 48 The Doom Patrol. Uh, right there. Look at that. Very classic. Next I have The Inhumans, issue number seven. And this issue is pretty worn, but it's still completely intact. There's some definite damage to the cover up there. Um, Inhumans were one of my favorite uh, superhero groups uh, in my early years of reading comic books. I find that now um, it's very difficult for me to find these comic books in decent shape at a an affordable price. I'd really like to get more of them, it's just they're hard to find. Uh, Inhumans, issue number nine. It's actually a pretty good copy right there. Inhumans, issue number 12. That's a very vibrant cover, cover there, very nice. And next I have some uh, few newer comic books. Uh, this is The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 282. Love that black cover, or you know, the, the black suit rather, very nice. Then I have uh, Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 254. Another nice uh, black suit cover. Issue number 251. And Amazing Spider-Man issue number 237. So I got a few few uh, Amazing Spider-Man in there, which is very nice. All right. Next up, we have The Defenders, issue number 47. This was published in 1977. Uh, the writers on it were David Kraft, Roger Slifer, John Warner. On pencils, we had Keith Giffen, inks, uh, were Klaus, was Klaus Janssen. And on letters, we had Gaspar uh, Saladino and John Costanza. In this issue, Moon Knight rescues uh, Jack Norris from Nick Fury, who I believe is an imposter. Uh, Hell, Hellcat stops at the Avengers Mansion and is attacked by Wonder Woman, who uh, apparently does not recognize her. And then Moon Knight and Valkyrie manage to fight him off, while um, Hellcat is able to access the Avengers database and prove that, in fact, Hellcat is a member of the Avengers. Next, I have Defenders, issue number 71. This was published in 1979. Uh, the writer was Ed Hannigan. On pencils, we had Herb uh, Triumph, I believe it's pronounced. Inks, we had Jack Abel. And on letters, we had uh, John Costanza. In this issue, Harrison Turk explains his origin story. Uh, the Defenders seek out uh, his remaining fragments. Uh, they find that what remains of him is serving the unnameable. 
Also, Doctor Strange and the Hulk are in this issue, and they're also seeking out the unnameable. That's actually a very, very nice cover. And so that's a, this book is in really good shape. I was really happy. There's a little bit, there's just like a tiny bit of wear up here in this corner, but like the rest of the, you know, it's in really good nice shape. Next, I have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 316. Uh, this one was published in 1986 with uh, writers, pencils, and inks being John Byrne. Uh, on letters, we have Rick Parker. In this issue, Hulk is on a nonstop rampage, and Iron Man and Wonder Man attempt to pacify him, but to no avail. Shortly after, Submariner and Hercules join the fray, but they cannot stop the Hulk. Eventually, Doc Samson makes an appearance, and when he arrives, uh, he, the Incredible Hulk ends up wandering off disinterested. It's actually a really nice cover. I always liked uh, Wonder Man. Like Wonder Man was like <laughs> extremely powerful. Next, we have up. We have the Invincible Iron Man issue number seventy-five. Uh, this issue was published in 1975. Uh, the writer was Mike Frederick, pencils, uh, Arville Jones. On inks, we have Chick Stone. And letters, Karen Menlo. Uh, on this issue, Modoc battles Iron Man. Uh, he defeats, him, defeats Iron Man easily so that he can battle uh, Mad Thinker. Pretty much, M Modoc beats everyone, and the only individual that ends up beating Modoc is the Claw who finally defeats him by destroying his entire battle suit. That's a really good, uh, it's a really good issue. Good story. I like it a lot. Next, I have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 282, published in 1983. Writers were Bill Manilow, pencils, uh, Sal Buscemi, inks, Joe Sennett, and on letters, uh, Jim Novak. This issue, uh, the leader sets aboard his ship, the Omnivac, plotting to take over the world. Iron Man works with uh, Bruce Banner to locate the Omnivac so they can stop uh, the leader. Um, at the Avengers man Mansion, the living arsenal um, comes from within the bowels of the mansion uh, and attacks the Hulk. Uh, they have a, a short battle and the Incredible Hulk finds out that the Avengers were simply testing him. That's a very nice issue there. Really good shape. The majority of these books are in really good shape. I'm really happy to get them. Okay, next up we have The Defenders, issue number 49. Um, this was published in 1977 and it has a first appearance of Zodiac and Leo. Uh, the writer was David Kraft. On pencils we have uh, Keith Giffen. Inks, Mike Royer, and on letters, Gaspar uh, Saladino. Uh, in this issue, Moonscape escapes from Scorpio and heads to inform the Defenders. Uh, meanwhile, Scorpio has Nighthawk captive. The, br the Defenders bring in the Incredible Hulk to rampage into Scorpio's base, but I believe they find that uh, Scorpio has already fled, so it's all for naught. Next up, we have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 230, published in 1978. Writer at that time was Elliot Magan. On pencils, we have Jim Mooney. On inks, we have Bob Layton. And letters, we had Gaspar Saladino and Bruce uh, Patterson. In this issue, uh, in a small Midwest town, The Incredible Hulk is attacked by the townsfolk. An alien witnesses the transgression from his ship in outer space and beams him to his ship. Um, the alien is trying to get like samples from the Incredible Hulk. Um, the Hulk reverts into Bruce Banner and at that time the alien decides he's going to prepare him and operate on him so he can get tissue samples. Uh, Bruce Wayne turns back into the Hulk and smashes a hole in the side of the ship and escapes. Next up, I have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 242, 
published in 1979. Writer was Roger Stern. On pencils, we have uh, Sal Buscemi. On inks, we have Sal Buscemi. And on letters, Jim Novak. In this issue, we have uh, Tyrannus. He's harnessed the power of the Incredible Hulk to revitalize the Cobalt Flame of El Dorado. Uh, Tyrannus uses a deep machinery and a brain mind to inca incapacitate the Incredible Hulk. Goldbug frees himself and helps uh, the Incredible Hulk, and Hulk ends up destroying the Temple of Flame. Next up, we have the Incredible Hulk, issue number 237. This issue was published in 1979. Uh, writer at the time was Roger Stern. On pencils, we had uh, Sal Buscemi, inks, Jack Abel, and on letters, Rick Parker. This issue, The Incredible Hulk battles the Machine Man in Central City. Um, the Incredible Hulk is just on an absolute rampage, destroying everything. The Machine Man manages to lure The Incredible Hulk away from the city, to reduce the amount of damage, and to try to probe his mind to see what's going on. Um, this enrages the Hulk even more, and he ends up destroying an entire shopping mall. Uh, Hulk continues his rampage until the Machine Man is able to use a Mesmer effect on him. Next, we have Doctor Doom and the Sinister Red Skull in the Supervillain super villain Team Up. Issue number 12. Uh, this issue was published in 1977. Writer at the time was uh, Bill Manilow. On pencils, we have Bob Hall, inks, Don Perlin. On letters, we had Gaspar Saladino and Tom Ors. In this issue, Dr. Doom and the Shroud travel to the moon to stop the Red Skull from using a uh, satellite. Uh, they managed to deactivate the satellite, but the, the shroud is bombarded by the sat satellite's uh, transmission, and it drives them insane. Captain America rescues the shroud, and Doctor Doom battles the Red Skull in a prolonged fight. Um, Doctor Doom defeats the Red Skull, burying him in a pile of moon rock. It's a really good issue, and it's a really nice cover. Next up, we have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 227. This issue was published in 1978. Uh, the writers at the time were Roger Stern and Peter Gillis. On pencils, we had Sal Buscemi. On inks, we had uh, Klaus Janssen. On letters, we had John Costanza and Rick Parker. In this issue, Doc Samson convinces Bruce Banner to undergo uh, mental therapy. Uh, Samson is able to go into the Incredible Hulk's mind using a, uh, a REM integrator device, which is pretty much like just it's able to project him into his like thought and in, into his mind. Uh, Samson visits many of the Incredible Hulk's early memories to include the gamma uh, bomb explosion, which created the Incredible Hulk. Um, the Incredible Hulk takes control after that moment in the dream and the Hulk recalls traumatic losses of many of his close friends, which causes him to become enraged in the dream sequence. And uh, Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk strike one another in the dream world, ending the dream in like a cataclysmic bang. And Samson awakens and inadvertently destroys the Rem Integrator Machine. It's a pretty, uh, pretty cool uh, idea for a, uh, a book. I thought, for its time. Next up, we have The Incredible Hulk, issue number 224, published in 1978. The writer at the time was Roger Stern. On pencils, we had Sal Buscemi. On inks, we had Joe Rubenstein. And on letters, we had John Costanza. In this issue, the leader uh, has captured Bruce Banner, Doc Samson, and General Ross along with Spade McCracken, that's how his name is, I don't know. 
the leader recollects his resurrection and recent exploits leading up to this point. Samson is able to free uh, Bruce Banner in General Ross. Um, Banner refuses to turn into the Incredible Hulk and instead they use a Hulk bot to pursue the leader and fight him. Um, the bot ends up getting damaged and creates a feedback loop which gravely injures Bruce Banner. Tragic. Very tragic. All right, next up we have The Defenders, issue number 48. This issue was published in 1977. Writers at the time were David Kraft and Don McGregor. On pencils we had Keith Giffen. On inks we had Dan Green. And on letters we had uh, Annette Kowicki. In this issue, The Defenders uh, turn Jack Norris over to S.H.I.E.L.D. Only find that it uh, that Nick Fury is an imposter working for Scorpio to build an army of Zodiac androids. Moon Knight is able to track down Scorpio and is captured and left to die in a tank full of water. Holy camoly. Very clean, very clean issue. Nice cover too there. Next we have the Defenders issue number 21 published in 1975. This features the first appearance of the Headman. Um, for this issue, the writer was Steve Gerber. On pencils, we had Cell Buscemi. On inks, we had Cell Trapini. And on letters, we had John Costanza. In this issue, Valkyrie decides that she wants to find her husband. Um, Nighthawk is rather distraught about this because he uh, is interested in Valkyrie. And he is actually visited by his, his old romance, romance Trixie. Um, the headman's Chandu the Mystic uses magic to put the people of New York into a frenzy with a mystical black rain. And the defenders face off against Gorilla Man and they fail because they're a bunch of failures. Next up, we have The Defenders, issue number 14. Uh, this was published in 1974. Um, the writer at the time was... Was that Len Wein? No. Pencils, Sal Buscemi, inks, Dan Green, and on letters, Artie Simic. Um, key note, notes on this issue, uh, Submariner leaves The Defenders, and Nighthawk joins the team. In this issue, the Defenders are captured by Squadron Sinister and Nebulon. Nighthawk tries to prevent Squadron Sinister from executing the Defenders, and he gets captured in the process inside the prison globe, and they're all shot into outer space. The defenders eventually free themselves and battle uh, Squadron Sinister and Nebulon. It's actually a very nice issue. Next up, we have The Defenders, issue number 26, published in 1975. Writer at this time was Steve Gerber. On pencils, we have Sal Buscemi. On inks, we have Vince Coletta. And on letters, we have uh, Gaspar Saladino and Karen Mantlow. In this issue, the Earth is racked by, uh, by devastation because of a temporal dis displacement caused by the Guardians of the Galaxy and their presence in the modern era. Uh, the Defenders agree to help the Guardians battle the Badoon rulers of Earth in the 31st century. Next up we have The Mighty Thor, issue number 218 published in 1973. Uh, the writer in this issue was Gary Conway. 
pencils, John Buscemi, inks, Jim Mooney, and on letters we had Artie Simic. In this issue, Odin has commanded Thor to go to Rigel and take with him Baldar, Sif, Tana Nile, and Silas Grant. Uh, the Asgardians arrive on the planet only to find it completely abandoned. All the inhabitants have fled from the Black Stars who arrive and then end up destroying the entire planet. It's a very nice cover and it's a, actually a very good book. Next we have The Mighty Thor, issue number 219. This issue was published in 1974. Uh, writer was Jerry Conway, pencils, John Buscemi, inks, Mike Esposito, and on letters we had L.P. Gregory. Uh, first appearances, there's a few in this issue. Uh, we had The Caretakers, Avalon, The Protector, The Runians, and Cragon. There's quite a few uh, first appearances there. In this issue, Thor and his group go to, go to the Black Stars and are attacked by Avalon. Um, Avalon is kind of a jerk and talks trash. The Protector attacks and a battle ensues and Thor ends up defeating the Protector. It's a very nice cover, a nice 20 cent uh, issue. Um, colors are very, very vibrant on this. There are some there's a few small uh, spine ticks, uh, but other than that, it's in very good shape. Next up, we have The Invisible Iron Man, issue number 61, published in 1973. Writer at the time was Mike Frederick. On pencils, we had George Tusca, inks, Mike Esposito, and on letters, John Costanza. Uh, in this issue, the masked marauder has Iron Man in prison and is gloating about him, you know, being able to imprison him and tells him all of his plans and how he's going to build an atomic bomb out of the shuttle. Eventually, Iron Man escapes and uh, goes to uh, meet with uh, Pepper. I always liked that, like, you know, like in old movies, old books, everything. It was like the villain would always disclose their grandmaster plan. Know, to the hero. Like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Tell me everything, please. Alright, next up we have Submariner, issue number 54, published in 1972. Writer, pencils, and on inks are all Bill Everett, with letters done by Artie Simic. Uh, in this issue, Namor and Sunfire battle Dragon Lord and defeat him. Sunf Sunfire destroys the base uh, the Dragon Lord inhabited. And Namor ends up returning to the cruise ship to join Beth Dean and Namorita. Next, I have Submariner, issue number 53. This issue was is published in 1972. Writer, penciler, and inks were all Bill Everett. On uh, letters, we had Artie Simic. Uh, in this issue, Dragonlord recalls his origin story and um, his acquisition and how he began using abandoned World War II technology to, uh, for their own ends. This issue is uh, quite a bit in worse shape than the last one. Uh, the covers got out, there's a lot of spine roll there. Um, but it is still completely intact. Um, it has all the staples. The cover itself, yeah, there's some lines here and there, um, but there's not like there's no tears or anything of that nature. Uh, the book is whole, so it, it makes this is uh, definitely a really nice uh, read copy. All right, next up, uh, this next comic I I got I just thought it was awesome. It's uh, it's a special Marvel edition, and it is the Mighty Thor, issue number two, and it's, it's a massive book. It's for that time. 
It's like it's a pretty thick book. It was a 25 cent oversized issue. Very nice book. Okay, next up, um, this, this net, next lot of books and the grail were all together as one item. Um, I got these all from Kersplat Collectibles and these guys really cut me an awesome deal. Um, apparently, I, uh, I agreed to get all this while I was having a, uh, a drinking marathon one evening. And it's probably the best non-regrettable non decision I've made while uh, intoxicated. So, here we go. Alright. I picked up issue number one of Mr. Miracle. Next, I picked up Mr. Miracle. Issue number two, published in 1971. Um, it was written and penciled by Jack Kirby. Inks, we had uh, Vince Coletta, and uh, it had first appearance of Dr. Bedlam and Granny Goodness. Gra and in this issue, Granny Goodness tries to destroy Mr. Miracle with the help of her soldiers and the Overlord. Alright, next up, I have Mr. Miracle, issue number three, and this was published in 1971, and again, on uh, the writer and pencils were both Jack Kirby. On inks, we had Vince Coletta, and this was, this featured the first full appearance of Dr., the first full appearance of Dr. Bedlam. In this issue, Mr. Miracle uh, is baited into a trap by Dr. Bedlam. Uh, the trap is a 50-story 50, 50 building full of people. Bedlam has driven absolutely insane. And Mr. Miracle's only way out is to fight all the way through the 5,000 maniacs to escape, to escape on the ground floor of the building. Sounds like a pretty wild story, right? All right, next up, we have Mr. Miracle, issue number four, published in 1971. Writing and pencils, we have Jack Kirby on inks, Vince Coletta, appearance of Big Barda. Uh, in this issue, Big Barda's, uh, it's her first appearance. She meets Mr. Miracle, and it's, her, it's shown that they're lovers and also best friends from Apocalypse. Um, she arrives on Earth to help him escape uh, yet another one of Dr. Bedlam's traps. That's actually a very nice, very nice issue there. There's a, there this issue does have a lot of wear and tear, but as far as like the coloring, the coloring is really nice. It's vibrant. Um, the spine does have some wear, but you can see all the writing very clearly on it. And uh, it's just a very solid copy. Next up, we have issue number five, published in 1971. Again, writing and pencils, we have Jack Kirby. On inks, we have uh, Mike Royer. And this issue feature, uh, featured the first appearance of Vermin Vandobar. In this issue, Vermin Vandobar kidnaps Big Barda, and Mr. Miracle must submit to being put in Vundabar's murder machine in order to save her. It's uh, actually a pretty wicked looking cover too. Let's see there you got Mr. Miracle and the old murder machine. <laughs> um, this, this issue has a little bit more wear on it. The, the spine is pretty rough on it. 
the uh, actual cover has some significant wear as well, but still a whole copy. You can read it. Next, I have Mr. Miracle issue number six, published in 1972. Writer and pencils Jack Kirby on inks, Mike Royer again. Uh, in this issue, we have uh, several first appearances. Uh, we have the female Furies, we have Bernadette, Lashina, Mad Harriet, and Stampa. We also have the first appearances of Funky Flashman and I believe House Roy. In this issue, Mr. Miracle agrees to let Funky Flashman be his promoter and handle all his upcoming affairs on his tour, but the female Furies uh, from Apocalypse attack him and Big Barda forcing a change of plans. That's actually a pretty nice copy of that issue. Next up, I have uh, Mr. Miracle, issue number seven. This was published in 1972 with uh, Kirby on pencils and writing. On inks, we had Mike Royer. In this issue, we have a few first appearances. Uh, we have first appearance of the Harassers. Canto and the Jet Bow Squad. Yeah. Um, in this issue, Mr. Miracle and Big Barter return to Apocalypse to confront their attackers. Mr. Miracle is captured by Canto, the Master Assassin, and taken to face Granny Goodness and her creation lump. See, there's some spine wear here, and it looks like uh, it was stamped like you know, 50 or 60 years ago, right there on the cover. But other than that, it's got really solid colors. Um, there's no real visible breaks in the color on the cover. There's like a little, just a tiny little dog ear right there, but other than that, it's in really good shape. Next, we have Mr. Miracle issue number eight. Published in 1972 with Jack Kirby on as the writer and pencils and on inks, Mike Royer, and on and letters, Mike Royer. This uh, this uh, featured the first appearance of I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Galotina, I guess. All right, Big Barda enlists the female Furies to help her find Mr. Miracle. And Mr. Miracle is fighting within the mine of Lump. If he does not defeat Lump, then he will die. All right, next up we have Mr. Miracle issue number nine. This was published in 1972 with Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils. Uh, inks and lettering was Mike Royer. Uh, this featured the first appearance of Hyman and the first appearance of Protector Willick. In this issue, Big Barda is cap. Th in this issue, Big Barda captures Scott uh, for Wonderful Willick. Willick murders all of the prisoners except Scott. Uh, Hyman is a uh, master escape artist and rescues Barda, Scott, and kills Willick with a bomb. Later, Scott escapes with the help of Big Barda. Darkseid makes an appearance and declares he will not interfere, and he gives Scott the choice to stay with him and become a warrior of Apocalypse, or he can use the boom tube and choose, and he chooses the latter and escapes. Pretty cool story. Next, we have Mr. Miracle issue number 10. This was published in 1972 with Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. This, this uh, featured the first appearance of the World Protective League and Head. Um, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, and the Female Furies uh, appear on Earth in an area controlled by Head, a mobile, a mobile uh, being that controls the World Protective League and is attempting to extort the nations of Earth with a germ bomb. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we have Mr. Miracle, issue number 11, published in 1972. Jack Kirby was on as writer and pencils with uh, Mike Royer as inks and letters. This issue, Mr. Miracle is trapped with uh, Dr. Bedlam on a spacecraft headed for the moon. Um, next, I have Mr. Miracle, issue number, tw issue number 12, uh, published in 1973, with uh, Jack Kirby on as writer, pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. In this issue, Mr. Miracle is challenged to, duel, to a duel to the death with Mistavik, who is an alien robot that subconsciously uh, gives him a death wish. everything down. <clears throat> Alright, next up we have Mr. Miracle, issue number 13, published in 1973 with Jack Kirby on as writer in pencils and Mike Royer as inks and letters. In this issue, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, and Ted Brown find themselves captured and at the mercy of King Komodo, the tyrant who held Ted Brown prisoner during the Korean War. That's, uh, that's pretty unfortunate. Next we have Mr. Miracle, issue number 14, published in 1973. With Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. In this issue, Mr. Miracle and Oberon run across a satanic cult led by a female mystic, Madam Evil Eyes. And these are all like th these issues are in really good shape. There's like very just like the most little bit of like spine wear, but I mean. This was like back in the 70s, so these are, to me, these are in excellent shape. Next, I have Mr. Miracle, issue number 15, published in 1973, with Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. Uh, we have a couple first appearances in this, this issue, um, Shiloh Norman and Lieutenant Solomon Driver. In this issue, Mr. Miracle accepts the job of guarding Shiloh Norman from the gang that killed his brother and wants to kill Shiloh as well, apparently. Next up, I have Mr. Miracle, issue number 16, published in 1973 with Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. In this issue, Shiloh Norman is knocked unconscious and has a very lucid dream where he's battling Professor Egg and the insect people. It's a pretty wild dream. I mean, that's a, this cover's like, that black really makes that uh, cover pop. Next I have Mr. Miracle, issue number 17, published in 1974, with Jack Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inker and letters. In this issue, Mr. Miracle, Barda, Shiloh, and Shiloh make an overnight stop and stay in a hotel run by a gangster, who mistakes them for three hoods who he has a contract out on. Oh boy.
And then last for this run is Mr. Miracle, issue number 18, published in 1974, again with Kirby on as writer and pencils, and Mike Royer on as inks and letters. And this issue, a horde of apocalypse villains led by Granny Goodness, capture Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, Shiloh, and Oberon, and they're all shackled to a death trap. They're rescued by Orion, High Father, Light Ray, Light Ray, and Metron, who battle and defeat the forces of Apocalypse. Um, Mr. Miracle and Barda are married by the High Father, but during their marriage, they're interrupted when a gigantic tornado approaches, and, and everyone ends up phasing out and reappearing in New Genesis. And it's after this that when the tornado dissipates, Dark Side reveals himself. Dun, dun, dun. So that is the entirety of this run and these books. Um, this, this 1 through 18 of Mr. Miracle is the entire run of Jack Kirby on this book. After issue 18, I believe there was a three-year hiatus, and then a completely new team uh, like picks up the series from there. So, so yeah, that's that. Um, next, I'm going to show you guys the Super Grail that I acquired during this uh, auction haul that I picked up. Um, this is the biggest this is the biggest book that I have in my collection now and I can honestly say that I have I've been waiting for it and when it arrived I I was beside myself just man just elation the, the feeling I don't know it's after what happened last week and after my drunk purchase of this I was really happy that I got it because this is probably the only thing I'll ever buy that had this on it. So here we go. Picked up Amazing Spider-Man issue number 300, um, CGC Signature Series. It's a 9.4, and the signature is by none other than Stanley. I don't know if I can even get that in the panel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, right up there, right at the top. It's signed by Stanley. 10-13-2013. So, this is an excellent comic book. And the fact that it's such high grade and it is signed by Stan Lee, this is going to be, without a doubt, this is, this is the biggest grail in my collection right now. And I honestly don't know when I'll get a book that's bigger than this because of what it is in and of itself, being Amazing Spider-Man 300, and the fact that it was now signed by the late Stanley. So, this comic means the world to me. I mean, this, this is an amazing piece of uh, comic book uh, art and history. Because now that Stanley is no longer with us, these uh, are going to be extremely coveted by the true collectors out there. Like, the guys that sold me this, along with all these Mr. Miracle comics, I mean, they, they, uh, they really hooked me up, and I, I'm just beside myself for words at this time. But if you guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, this video, please feel free to uh, throw a like down and uh, leave me a comment. I do reply to all the comments that I get. And if you haven't done so, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you can watch uh, future wonderful comic book content that I'll be showcasing in the near future. So, until then, guys, keep on collecting them books. <laughs>